Nissa from our small footprint here. Hope everyone is having a bit of a better day than we are here. It is really, really warm. Sitting at about 32 degrees, about 60% humidity. Pretty normal for this time of the year, but kind of unbearable. When you look on it, look on a Humidex, it tells you that this kind of weather is the kind of weather that you avoid any exertion. <laughs> but, you know, life goes on and to a degree we can't do that. So I'm going to share with you the next thing that we make from scratch that helps with the budget but also gives us those treat type things. So I'm going to make some simple syrups today, uh, some cordial style syrups and some coffee style syrups. So we do a cold brew uh, coffee which I'll show you as well and then we use simple syrups to sweeten it slightly. We don't use very much but it is nice to have a little bit. We also have a soda stream and we have a six and a half kilo CO2 tank that we have an adapter attached to our soda stream maker. Uh, it means that we can just get the single tank refilled uh, at an outlet rather than purchasing the 450 gram tanks at a higher cost. It's much cheaper to get the larger tank filled. We just have to take it somewhere to be filled. It is kind of bulky but it just sits in the corner of our kitchen beside my sink um, and it works really well for us so we make all our own cordials we make a ginger citrus one a berry citrus one whatever I happen to feel like at the time a peach one when we've got peaches I'm going to make another ginger one and probably a berry one today as well uh, you can can it we don't tend to because I tend to just make a batch that will last us a couple of weeks and it's fine for a couple of weeks in the fridge uh, there's enough sugar in it that it doesn't really go. If anything, it'll ferment slightly and you'll know by smell if, it's, if there's anything wrong with it. So generally speaking, the, the sugar protects it. Can add citric acid, which will prolong the shelf life of it as well in the fridge or when you can it. I don't have any citric acid at the moment, so I'm not going to, but as I said, we'll use it all. The kids like it, so do we, and it's um, we just make the soda, stream, the soda water and add it to the soda water it's a nice refreshing drink when it's so hot that you want something else to drink but you're just sick and tired of drinking plain water so I'm gonna pull all my stuff out to get started and then I'll bring you along okay so I've got the fan on again so that you might be able to hear that but uh, it's got to help the flies so the first thing I'm gonna do is the ginger lime now I've got some lime juice from all those limes that I've had frozen in ice cube trays here so I'm gonna use that I got some fresh ginger that I got through the from the fruit and veg shop this month uh, I try and buy it in bulk when it's cheap and see it in the freezer. Other, whoops. Otherwise, I um, I am growing some. So each year I have some that I grow that I then freeze. The I have three or four times the amount of plants this year than I did last year because I use it so much now. I also have as a backup some dried ginger. So these are just pieces of ginger dried that I in a one kilo bag from Nuts About Life, and I can use this now. I have to remember that. The weight of this is a lot lighter than the weight of this, so I need to use less of the dried if I have to use dried, which I don't have to this particular time, but I do have it so that all year round we can make the ginger lime cordial or the ginger beer or whatever we decide we want to make ginger flavored um, without having to fork out 30, 40 dollars a kilo for fresh ginger, which there's no way I could afford. You'll have to excuse the kids in the pool as well. <laughs> right. Okay, so ratios we generally do about 150 grams of ginger to a kilo of sugar, 175 ml of lemon or lime juice and 1.5 liters of water. Then you can add four teaspoons of citric acid if you have it. So I'm gonna dice up some of this ginger a bit smaller and put it in the pot. You leave the skin on and everything else, it just needs to be um, cut up smaller. The more surface area, the more it's get, the flavor is gonna end up in the liquid. Roughly chop into smallish pieces. Whatever I don't use, I will just put in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Got a heavy bottom, bottom pot here that I'm using for this. I'm just going to weigh in 150 grams into the pot. Now we're going to weigh out the sugar. 
sugar in there. All right, so I've got a tub with my sugar in it here that I use for anything in the way of preserving or stuff that needs a whole lot of sugar. I'm gonna do a test run of the sugar a bit less because we don't eat things very sweet now. Uh, we did a whole 30 where we didn't eat any sugar at all. And so we've been able to reduce the sugar in things that we do eat and been quite happy with the flavors and stuff. So I put 750 grams in here and we'll see how it tastes. Um, and I might be able to reduce it even further for our tastes. Because I'm not canning it, it's not as important. If it was canned, it's more important to have the ratios correct because you want it to be shelf stable. But as I'm storing it in the fridge, it doesn't really matter the ratio of sugar so long as it's consumed within a couple of weeks in the fridge. So now I need to add a liter and a half of water to this and then I'm gonna stick it on the stove. I'm going to bring it up to temperature till the uh, sugar dissolves, but I'm not gonna boil it. I'm just gonna bring it right up to temperature till everything's dissolved, pull it off the heat, add the lime juice, and then I'm gonna let it sit and steep for a while. So let me add the water to this one and get it on the heat. The other cordial I'm gonna to do today is blueberry lemon because I had blueberries in the freezer. So you can use any berry you want. I really like raspberries, but raspberries are much more expensive than blueberries frozen. So it depends on what's in season as to what I use, but I've got here 500 grams of frozen blueberries that I'm gonna stick in the bottom of this pot here. And then I'm going to put 600 grams of sugar in here. So the sugar in the ginger beer is higher normally to compensate for the heat of the ginger with, and there's no sweetness in the ginger, not really, whereas berries is lower. So the standard is 600 grams sugar for a kilo of fruit. I am going to stick with that for this batch, but again, I'm gonna, I've been taking notes of what sort of ratios we like, and I might reduce it even more for the next batch. We'll just see how we go. It depends on the fruit too. Like raspberries are a lot more sour than blueberry. Blueberry is sweeter. So it depends on which fruit. These are frozen blueberries, so they're not optimal as in sweetness levels because they're frozen. So I'm gonna stick with the 600 grams of sugar for this. And then I'm going to mash it up, probably with a potato masher, get it all pulpy, and then add the water. And again, I'm gonna bring it to heat, and then I'm going to add the lemon juice. So I'm going to add a significant amount of lemon juice, probably, 200 mils I suppose we'll um I might taste it at 200 mils because it'll be it'll be off the heat then and see whether I think it needs a little bit more I've got lemon juice frozen in the freezer as well so I'll just be using that so let me get the sugar added to this and I'll bring you back when we've got both of them have been heated up and the sugar's been dissolved I think I actually got that wrong too. I'll check when I'm editing, but I'm using 300 grams of sugar because I'm only using half a kilo of fruit. If I was using a kilo of fruit, I would use 600 grams of sugar. Uh, so yeah, 600 grams of sugar per one kilo of berries. The other thing to note is that we like to keep them fairly thin because we find that it mixes into the soda stream better, the soda water. So if it, if it ends up too syrupy, because you cannot add water to all these, you can reduce the sugar, you can just cook down the berries with the sugar and a bit of lemon juice and make sort of a, a liquidy jam and use that sort of thing. But it doesn't blend with the soda water very well and we like it more like a cordial. So we tend to use a liter and a half of water, if not more, with the ratios and we don't Got interrupted by children and I don't know where I was up to. Something along the lines of, we prefer it thin. The longer you cook it, the more syrupy it'll become. The sugar will end up making it more of a syrup or like, you know, like you're looking at pancake syrups and jams and things like that. We don't boil it or simmer it. We just bring it up to a nice heat, put a lid on it, let it see, let it steep on its own and then we strain it. We do tend to strain it, push as much to a strainer as possible, but strain it too because Daryl doesn't like bits in his soft drink. It doesn't really worry me, but he doesn't like the chunks of fruit in it. So we strain it through, we push it through a strainer and keep just the liquids. But it's personal preference how you want to do it. So we just like it nice and thin. Cordial, it ends up being a higher ratio of cordial to water, but there's a higher ratio of product because we haven't cooked it down to make a syrup either. Alrighty, so the ginger syrup just started to bubble, just off the boil, not quite boiling. So I pulled it off the heat and now I'm going to add some lime juice. So 
each of these ice cubes, which I've left sitting out a bit too long and have started melting, but each of these ice cubes is about 80 mils. So I'm going to <laughs> guesstimate and take the excess juice out and then probably these two smaller pieces at the end and mix it through. seems pretty good so now I'm just going to let it steep for a few hours I'll strain it tonight probably um, and put a lid on it and let it steep until it comes down to room temperature ready to be strained I'm also going to throw half a dozen of these frozen lime slices uh, in to the pot while it's steeping just to add a bit more of that lime flavor to the cordial Alrighty, so the blueberry has done the same. It's come up to just before a boil and then I've taken it off the heat and I've got 200 mils of frozen lemon juice ice cubes here that I'm going to pour in. And then I'm just going to mix it up and then do the same as the ginger. I'm going to place it, a lid on it just place it on the back of the stove to steep until I'm ready to strain it out later. So the other syrups we make are simple syrups, coffee syrups. So we drink cold brew coffee or we do pour over hot coffee. Um, we don't use any sweetener in our hot coffee generally speaking but we do like it in the iced coffee so I've got some cold brew going in the fridge at the moment so I'll pull that out and show you how we strain that and stuff shortly but I'm gonna make some syrups beforehand so I've already made a uh, the lighting is horrible in here which is why I keep on moving around when I'm talking to you so I've already made a basic vanilla bean simple syrup which is just one part sugar, one part water, cooked until everything's dissolved. Then I added some of my, I've got homemade vanilla. So I've got vanilla beans that I've had soaking in vodka. And this particular batch, I then ground up all the vanilla beans into the vodka and I'm gonna make paste out of it. But for the moment, I just used a smidge of that into the simple syrup. But I'm also going to make a salted caramel and a chocolate one, so I'll take you along with that. Now, the chocolate one's very simple, same, but basically the same process as a simple syrup or the vanilla. You just have to heat the cocoa, cacao, I don't have any cocoa, I've only got cacao, but some cacao, sugar, water, till it gets to the right consistency, add a bit of vanilla, and then pour it into a jar and store it in the fridge. The caramel one, I need to get the sugar to caramelize. So I'm going to cook the water and the water and the sugar until it hits a caramel and then add more water to it to make it a syrup. So I'll bring you along for that. So we've got two pots here. I've only got one small stainless steel, one that is non-stick, which is not my favorite pan, but I'm gonna use that for the chocolate because I don't have to whisk it or anything, whereas I have to whisk the sugar or give it a good stirring. So we're gonna use the stainless steel for that so I don't damage the pot. All right, so let's do the chocolate one first because then I can heat it and let it sit, put it aside to cool while I am making the caramel one. Um, so chocolate one, we're going to use two thirds of a cup of water. And two thirds of a cup of sugar. Now, I didn't mention before too that I use raw sugar for everything, so the colour of the cordials is a little bit more golden than you'd expect because of the fact that I use raw sugar, not white sugar. So, two thirds, except I'm using a quarter, so I'm just going to put a little bit extra sugar. And then, what's I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of cacao. Now cacao's quite strong and quite bitter, so if I was using cocoa or dutched cocoa or something like that, I'd probably use more, but because I'm using cacao, 
I'm only going to use a quarter of a cup. Now I washed all my utensils so that they don't turn everything blue and all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up. The cow won't blend very well into the water but as we heat it it will. So I'm going to add a tiny pinch of salt to that and then I'm going to heat it and once I bring it off the heat, so that's what it looks like there, you can see that, um, and then once I bring it off the heat I'm going to add some vanilla to it as well and then we'll let it sit and cool before we decant it into a jar. Alright, chocolate syrup. Now this is really luscious, it will be great for the iced coffee but it could also be used to make hot chocolate for the kids. Um, in coconut cream so now again with, similar to the cordials because it's a syrup the longer you low simmer it the thicker it would go but we don't want it too thick because we want it to blend into what we're using well so to do that it needs to be thinner and then I'm just going to add some of my vanilla bean mix here just a teaspoon and then mix that through and then I'm going to cover it and just let it sit and cool before I decant it into jar. Now as I said the uh, caramel syrup is a little bit different because it's going to be cooked to caramel first so uh, I'm going to make it a slightly bigger batch because it's more work so it's worth doing a bit larger batch at a time. So we're going to start with a cup and a half of sugar cup and a half of water. Yes. Carvick just came and stole the spatula from the chocolate syrup to leak, which is fine. Alright, so we can take this over to the stove and I'll bring the camera with me and we're going... Alright, so what we've got to do is we've got to get this to a boil. Uh, so that all the sugar is dissolved and it comes up to a, a steady sort of a bubble. And once it's bubbling, then we need to leave it alone for a minute or two till it turns more of a caramel colour. So it's a bit like making toffee if you've ever made toffee before, except we're going to pull it off before it hits toffee stage. And we're going to add more water to it to make it into a syrup. So when you're adding the water, you have to be really careful because it will spit at you. It will um, splash and spit. So uh, something just be careful and try and use water that's either warm or room temperature not cold because you don't want too much of that contrast of temperatures between the two so that took about four and a half minutes to come up to a rolling sort of a boil and now you want to not touch it while it's doing this and wait for the color change and the color change isn't going to be quite as obvious on this because I've used raw sugar not white sugar but what we're looking for is a darkening a, a caramelizing caramel color um, and a thickening it's sort of up to you I suppose to a degree as to how far you want to take the caramel um, the longer you cook it the darker the caramel the more potential to burn it too I suppose but the darker the caramel the more bitter or burnt the flavor is anyway so we're gonna let this go for a few minutes and see what the color looks like and then assess how much further I want to take it. So that's been about five minutes and we've still just got a, a pale amber colour so I'm going to keep going with that one. Alright we're at ten minutes so let's just have a look at the colour. It's still not as dark as I'd like, it's definitely getting there though so I'm going to go a little bit longer. All right, we've definitely got color change here. You can see it in the in the bubbles, and that's definitely a caramel color. So we're going to turn the heat off on that. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to whisk in another cup and a half of water. Now when the water hits it, there's its chance of it spitting and sizzling. So you just need to be careful while doing it.
grab all the caramel from the edges. Oh, my hand's in the way and I didn't even realize. So you need to grab all the caramel from the edges as well. And it looks like it's starting to crystallize up. Then you just want to turn the heat back on for a little bit. But it's sitting over the burner, so there's probably a little bit of residual heat there anyway. There you go. So we've added the extra cup and a half of water and we've got this lovely caramel looking liquid there. So there we go. Caramel syrup. And now we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt, pepper, salt. bit of salt and two teaspoons of vanilla. So I'm going to put this aside to cool as well. While that's cooling, I'm going to pull the cold brew out and strain it and start it again for tomorrow. And um, then we can taste these syrups with that coffee. Alrighty, so we do cold brew on the cheap, like we do a lot of things. So I have a coffee grinder that my mum gifted me, which is really awesome because I was hand grinding it beforehand and that's hard work. The grinder that mum gave me has different settings on it from coarse through to super fine so when we make hot coffee we use a cloth we use cloth coffee filters these washable reusable cloth coffee filters we put coffee grinds in there and pour the hot water over it and then that's how we make hot coffee so i use a filter grind for that for cold brew we use a coarse grind and all i do is i have these half gallon jars here, two litre jars, mason jars, and I put a 30 second worth of grind in there, which is around about 75 grams of coarse coffee, fill it up with two litres of filtered water, and put it in the fridge for 24 hours. Then once I have, uh, once it's sat, it's sat in the fridge for 24 hours, then I'll bring it out, and I have a second half gallon jar, Oops, I'm in front of the camera here again have a second half gallon jar that I then strain it into. So all I do is I have my funnel on top with my to hold my cloth filter. I just realized I had some clean cheesecloth sitting on the bench from last time I strained yoga cheese. So I pulled that out. Because I use a quite a coarse grind then uh, it's not going to need a whole lot of like the cloth filter is probably overkill. Um, because the grind of the coffee is coarse enough that it shouldn't go through. This is four layers, I think, of cheesecloth, and that should be plenty. And that just made it a whole lot quicker. So it means that I can just pick it up and squeeze the rest of it out as well. All right, so coffee grinds in this house, they get split between our two kitchen bins. Some end up in the, so make sure I've got all this out. Some end up in the worm farm and some end up in the compost. Uh, so we just make sure that there's not too many in each place. Alright, so there we go. That's the coffee. I need to find another lid. So let's see if we can get the colour. We're on the wrong side for the right lighting. But that's it there. So I'm going to find a lid for that one and then I'm going to wash this jar out so that we can start a fresh batch for tomorrow. Right, so all I do is I put the grinds in, just using the funnel to make my life a bit easier. For pouring purposes, pour all the 
grinds in like that. Just in the bottom of the jar, and then I'm just going to fill it up to the shoulder with water and put the lid on it and stick it in the fridge for 24 hours. I'm going to give the salted caramel a go. Now, flies are really bad because there's so much sugar around today, so let's give this one a go. We're going to put again a couple of ice cubes. Cold brew. Dash of coconut cream. And then a scant tablespoon of the salted caramel. There you go. Well done. Looking at the quantity that this made, it's fairly mild, it's very thin. Um, I probably will not put the, as much water in once I've hit that caramel. Um, it was a cup and a half, but which is, you know, one to one sugar to water, which is pretty normal. But um, I think it could definitely be thicker, so I think that I will use less um, water in that second uh, that when after a caramel and I add that extra water and then it'll be less, but I think I'm going to be using a little bit more per drink of this because it's thinned out so much, but I would have preferred to just fit it into the two jars at the most rather than having to put it between the three so if I use that little bit extra a little bit less water then that should be the case so there we go I have to find a lid for those two but that's the salted caramel so we had those ones and the vanilla which has all the lovely bits of vanilla in it chocolate and all done once again dinner time invaded finishing off the video so we've all had baths now and eaten and now I'm going to mix some dough up for tomorrow's bread, probably some bagels, I'd imagine, and get all the cordials and stuff in the fridge. So that was the task for the today. That was all the cordials and the syrups done for at least a couple of weeks, I'd imagine. I'll have to see how long it lasts and, and gauge that, but gives us something extra to drink other than just water in the heat, which is really nice. So that's it from me today. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you uh, it encourages you to try making some more things from scratch at home and uh, find out what might save you some money by making them yourself rather than buying them. Because that's the end game, is to save money by making things from scratch. The other thing is, is to minimize the things that we purchase. So by buying say like frozen fruit for our smoothies and all that sort of stuff but then also using them for cordials we're multi-purposing single items and buying only sugar and using it for that or buying only coffee beans and using it for cold brew as well as for hot coffee means that we don't have to buy instant coffee anymore to make our iced coffee syrups or anything like that so we're trying to reduce the quantity of items that we purchase and just buying those items in larger amounts streamlining it works well for us anyway and it has definitely helped with the budget so thank you for watching and if you're interested in seeing more please subscribe or hit the bell if you want to be notified of when we release new videos and let me know in the comments anything that I can do better or anything that you'd like me to cover that'd be great alrighty have a good night